just like smoking cigarettes. There's no safe amount, should be zero, right? So that's the LDL cholesterol concept. Now we move to protecting our endothelium at all costs. And the endothelium is a single lining of cells right here, very fragile, very important for us to make sure that we protect it at all costs because any little damage uh, can cause inflammation and eventually lead to cholesterol plaque building up in there. So what we really need to do is no matter what, no matter what we can is, is keep the uh, keep those the endothelium nice and healthy. And the way I like the analogy I'd like to use here, which I alluded to earlier, is thinking of the process that damages the endothelium as you know inflammation. It is inflammation, right? It's an inflammation process clogging your arteries. Look at the word inflammation. It's in flame. So just think about the endothelium being on fire. So your arteries are on fire. Uh, if they're inflamed, if you're doing the wrong things, if you're smoking cigarettes, secondhand smoke exposure, eating processed foods, animal-based foods. And again, there is individual variability. Some people are more prone to inflammation from different food groups than others. It's a little hard to tease out, but we could use C-reactive proteins and some other uh, inflammatory markers to help determine these things. But this is the way we got to think about it. So if your arteries are on fire, if you got the inflammation going on, you don't want to ever do anything to pour gas on that fire. You don't want to fuel the inflammation. Animal products, oil of any kind, refined carbohydrates, the caffeine thing is a little bit controversial, maybe a small percentage of people, uh, probably not that big of a deal. Uh, but saturated fats, tobacco, and secondhand smoke, you don't want those things to fuel the flame and cause the inflammation because if the endothelium is inflamed and your blood cholesterol numbers are up, that's when the plaque is going to accumulate. What you want to do is pour water on it, right? You want to do the things that are going to help the endothelial function. The proper foods that really help promote good health and are anti-inflammatory help the natural nitric oxide release to help keep the arteries healthy. Fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, whole grains, herbs, and spices. Guess, guess what these are? These are unprocessed plant-based foods, right? So that's what we need to focus on. But here's the issue. We get a lot of people who eat the good, healthy fruits, vegetables, beans, lentils, they're eating a lot of plant-based foods, but then they're also eating a lot of the unhealthy foods, right? Um, so what we always do now in our medical world is we try to give pills to lower blood pressure, cholesterol, you know, anti-inflammatory stuff, whatever, but don't necessarily remove the harmful things that are causing the problem. The whole concept of lifestyle medicine, just like stop cutting your hand with a knife, let the body heal up, stop pouring the gas on the flame and guess what happens? Now you're only pouring water on it and the fire will go out. So that's a simple analogy. It is as powerful as that, it's as simple as that. That's what I love about lifestyle medicine and heart disease reversal and prevention. It's so simple, it's common sense, it's intuitive. I just wish it was easier for people to do and it was embraced more to make it easier for our culture the way it is, it's, it's a challenge. And really, like I said, moderation doesn't work. It only takes one meal one problem, and you can end up causing some endothelial injury. And there's crazy stories of people on plant-based diets, and they went out one time and they splurged. And during that splurge, they caused some endothelial injury and some inflammation and it triggered an event. Those are anecdotes, of course, who knows if one meal really can have that much of an impact, but it's possible. When you look at this shot from this picture from the Game Changers documentary, showing a blood sample after eating a low fat plant-based meal versus a higher fat animal-based meal, meal. And you can just see the fat in, in the blood sample versus how nice and clear and clean this is. There's just so much fat going through the system causing endothelial injury, it's crazy. So that's why a whole food plant-based diet is so important, focusing on getting your cholesterol numbers down and focusing on protecting your arteries uh, at all costs. And this is where I tell you that I lied to you. Earlier in the presentation, I told you heart disease was the number one killer in America, right? Well, maybe if you look at individual diseases, it is, but really heart disease is not the number one cause of death. The number one cause of death is diet. This is the burden of disease uh, study, which was uh, a big study showing the things that we can avoid in order to you know, prevent a premature death dietary risks were the number one preventable thing that we can do. So we should really not say that heart disease is the number one killer. We need to say the truth and speak it the right way. Our diet and our lifestyle is the number one killer in America. 
And you've heard this before, maybe, but the analogy is, is this, it's tobacco. A long time ago, people thought smoking was good for you, good for your lungs, good for your heart, all this stuff is promoted by doctors, advertised, marketed, all these things. And it took so much time before the research finally was obvious and clear. And the Surgeon General put a warning on there. They used to promote it to people who smokes, uh, who are pregnant. You know, this is one that Dr. Greger likes to show, blow in your face and she'll follow you anywhere. This is absolutely ridiculous. But the current state is actually how it relates to food. Now, man, I tell you, the smoking a long time ago was a big deal, right? So doctors used to smoke in the hospital. They would actually give patients tobacco and cigarettes in the hospital when they were admitted, which is just crazy when you think about it, right? Absolutely mind boggling. I have a patient who was treated at Cleveland Clinic by a famous Dr. Sohn's cardiologist who developed a technique called the Sohn's technique where they go into the artery in the arm and that's how they access the heart to do an angiogram and look at things. And so he ended up, uh, getting an angiogram by Dr. Sones. And I was like, oh, let me see the scar. Let me take a look and see. And I was looking at it as I'm, oh my gosh, that's a Dr. Sones scar. It's a, he's a legend. I can't believe it. And he, and, he, and, he, and he laughed and he said, oh, guess what else? See this right next to my scar? That's the burn wound from when Dr. Sones dropped his cigarette on me during the surgery. During the surgery, this famous Cleveland Clinic cardiologist dropped a cigarette on my patient and burned him. That's the way it used to be. Now you fast forward to today. Okay, tobacco's out. They can't sell tobacco in hospitals. But now it's sugar and it's processed foods and it's animal-based foods. I have had many times where I've had people after heart attacks being served bacon and sausage and eggs and red meat in the hospital. It's in the cafeteria. I mean, we used to do our conferences. It would be pizza, soda, and potato chips. That's what they were, you know, feeding the trainees. And still to this day, I go to, like, I went to a big lipid conference about cholesterol management and the lipidologists were eating steak. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And it's just people foo-foo off the diet because they don't want to change their diet. Not that they don't necessarily understand that there's a risk to eating red meat, saturated fat and cholesterol and endothelial injury and all these things that we talked about, but the culture is so ingrained in their head. That's the way they were raised and they'd rather just take a pill. And that is crazy that even the, you know, the number one cause of death in cardiologists is heart disease. And so that's where we need to start. And that's where I'm embarrassed and I'm doing everything I can. I've actually converted multiple cardiologists and other physicians over to plant-based diets and help, help them understand these lifestyle medicine concepts. And I'm never going to give up. I'm going to keep pushing until we finally get there because this is the state of nutrition right now in the United States. 63% of calories come from processed foods, added fats and oils, sugars, and refined grades more than half of our calories are nothing. There's no nutritional value to that whatsoever. Basically, they say we're overfed and undernourished. Only 12% of our calories are plant-based foods. And half of that plant-based food is potatoes from French fries and tomatoes from ketchup. Absolutely ridiculous. And then 25% of the standard American diet is animal-based food. So that's the state of, of, uh, of the nutrition in, in the United States. What I, I like this concept so much, talking about, again, the three food groups, the processed foods, like I showed earlier, animal foods and unprocessed plant-based. And I show people this and I say, you wanna take this green and you wanna increase it as much as you can, take this red and decrease it, eliminate the yellow. The blue zones, the longest living cultures in the world, ranged anywhere from 85 to 99% whole food plant-based, averaging somewhere around the mid 90% range of calories from fruits and vegetables, beans, lentils, whole grains, nuts, and seeds, unprocessed plant-based. That's where we need to be. And so this graph is a really nice way to kind of show that and, and emphasize to people, man, you need to take this green part of the pie graph and, and increase it as much as you can. So the current my plate in the USDA dietary guidelines, they show fruits and vegetables, grains, they still have dairy, which we're fighting so hard to remove. It's been removed in Canada's food guide, which I'll show you in a moment, but not yet in the United States. That's the big influence of the dairy industry. I'm so disappointed in, in the politicians and such for this. They put protein there, but really what they need to emphasize is plant protein, right? So this is the uh, proposed from PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, fruits, grains, whole grains, of course, vegetables, and legumes as the protein, and drink only water. That's the way it should be. And that is almost the way the Canada Food Guide is. They said, make water your drink of choice. They remove dairy as a food group. And they do say eat protein foods and they emphasized to eat predominantly plant-based proteins. They do show some animal-based proteins here, but when you read their guidelines, look, they're showing tofu, lots of beans, lentils, nuts. Uh, so they are emphasizing plant-based 
protein. So this is a good step in the right direction. Now, remember, it is variable. Many people can eat a diet like this with some animal protein, some cholesterol saturated fat. And as long as they're avoiding all the processed foods, not smoking and exercising, many people can be free of heart disease for their life. Doesn't mean the animal foods are good for you. It just means some people can tolerate them and get a little bit lucky, right? Eating 100% plant-based is the, the safer, better way to go. But if you're somebody who has a big genetic risk of heart disease, if your cholesterol number is high, if you're overweight, if you already have plaque buildup, you don't want any animal product. You want to go 100% whole food plant-based. And it's so important to emphasize the whole food part. I tell people, eat the orange, don't drink the orange juice, eat the olive, don't drink the olives, uh, don't drink the olive oil. Yeah, please don't drink the olive oil. Don't use the olive oil. And a lot of people are always like, oh, what about the protein? You got to watch the Game Changers documentary. I'll show you some athletes and uh, the protein is never a concern. As long as you eat adequate calories, of unprocessed plant-based foods. You get all amino acids, you get all the protein you need. And if anybody ever questions you, if you're in the healthcare field, if you're talking to a friend or a family and they're like, oh, plant-based diet, protein, you're gonna get nutrient deficient, blah, 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 all this stuff, whatever. Just say that the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is the longest nutrition, the largest nutrition organization in the world has a statement that says, appropriately planned vegan diets are healthful and nutritionally adequate for all stages of life, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescents, older adults, and athletes, all stages of life, nutritionally adequate. That means all the macronutrients you need, including protein, all the micronutrients you need, all the vitamins and minerals. The one exception is B12, which is a whole different discussion. B12 comes from bacteria and you wash your vegetables, you wash it off. Animal-based foods are heavy in bacteria. You get B12, but you know what? The United States Preventative Services Task Force, if people bring up the, the B12 thing, you tell them, you know what? The big guidelines from the United States Preventative Services Task Force, USPFTF, they say all Americans should be on B12 if you're age 50 or older because absorption goes down over time. So it's something if you're over age 50, I should be taking B12 anyways. It's not like I have to take a supplement because I'm on a plant-based diet. We should all be taking it anyways because of how common B12 deficiency is over time as people hit over the age of 50. So B12 is not an issue. It's so easy to take a supplement, no big deal. And I'd rather do that than develop heart disease or stroke, right? And here's the example of the protein people who eat plant-based. There's this guy's featured in the Game Changers. It's pretty amazing. This guy ran the Appalachian Trail in 46 days, which is more than 50 something miles a day, every day, 46 consecutive days. It's, you know, check out the Game Changers. It's back on Netflix finally. I heard it was off for a while. It's back on Netflix. It is such a powerful way to learn about this. A James Cameron documentary, Arnold Schwarzenegger, lots of athletes, Olympians, and a very powerful way of explaining how important it is to eat plant-based for heart health. <music>